Goody goody and welcome to Headbangers Kitchen. We've got a great show for you guys today. We've got Matthias Ia Eklund from the band Free Kitchen coming in all the way from Sweden and we're cooking up a freaky fish curry for him. So let's go make that freaky fish curry. So to start making our freaky fish curry, we're going to start out by making a curry paste. And for that, we're going to take one large onion, one large tomato, and as you can see, I'm using one of these nifty little grinders that can barely fit in everything. And I'm just going to blend this first. As you can see, it's completely filled up. All right, so now that we've blend the onion and the tomatoes, we're gonna add some more stuff to this. We're gonna add some ginger and garlic. That's some whole ginger and whole garlic. <clears throat> gonna add some turmeric, some red chili powder, and you can uh, probably add more red chili powder if you want it to be spicier. I'm gonna add some coriander powder, and some amchur or dried mango powder. And once again, I will blend this. So now that our curry paste is blended, you can see it has a rich color and a beautiful smell. And that's the first part of our recipe done. So we're just going to turn the gas on now. And we're going to put some oil into our saucepan. About a tablespoon of oil should be fine. And you want to cook this on a medium high heat. So what we're going to do basically is once the oil is hot, we're going to fry some mustard seeds and some curry leaves. And that is going to give a beautiful flavor and aroma to the curry. So once the mustard seeds start to pop like that, you know it's ready. And now we're going to add our curry paste. And you're going to let that cook now. You want to let this cook for a few minutes just so all the masalas are cooked out and you know the flavor is completely there. Oh that smells divine. Alright, so our curry paste has now been cooking for a good 3 to 4 minutes and we're going to add some delicious coconut milk into that. Because obviously this is a coconut curry and the coconut milk just adds a beautiful richness to the curry and a delicious flavor. And I've added about 200 mils of coconut curry. You can add less or more depending on how coconutty you like your curry. And I'm going to add one more ingredient to this, which is something you get in India called kokum, which is a fruit of some kind or the outer covering of a fruit. So you add in the kokum and I've soaked it in water for a little while. And this gives a lovely tangy flavor to the curry. And of course, there's one more thing which we need to add, which is essential. And that, my friends, is salt. So make sure you season your curry well. And as I've said in almost every episode thus far, always taste your sauce. Mm. That is delicious. So now that the curry has started simmering, 
it's time to add the fish and I'm using some local fish called the kapi fish that's what my fisherwoman told me but you can use any fish you like you can use sulmai, ravas, mackerel, cod, whatever whatever you get just make sure it's good fresh fish so I'm going to add the fish now and this will cook pretty quickly because fish doesn't take too long and I've cut them into nice bite-sized pieces And you can see the fish has already started cooking. Okay, so it looks like our fish has cooked through. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece and show you that it's cooked through beautifully, lovely, white fish. And that's absolutely perfectly cooked. I'm going to turn the gas off now. And I'm going to throw in some fresh coriander just to finish it off and that is a beautiful fish curry and I'm just going to serve this with some plain jeera rice to put some of that gravy in get some pieces of the fish fish so here you have it the freaky fish curry is ready and it smells delicious I can't wait for Matthias Ia Eklund to come and taste this now welcome back to headbangers kitchen my guest today is a Swedish legend he's the master of the guitar he's the Sultan of shredding and one of the most innovative musicians around today. He's also got crooked frets on his guitar and he loves to say goody goody. Please welcome Matthias Ia Eklund. Thank you, sir. Shall we shake hands? We Hello, shall. Sahil. How are you, Matthias? I am tip top. It's good to be back here in uh, Bombay and uh, at uh, your place and everything. So, yes. I'm yeah, it's been goody uh, goody. <laughs> so, Matthias, you've probably been to India more times than any other musician from Sweden that I know of. <laughs> you know, so what keeps you coming back to India? Well, um, your, your country has, it's, you know, got under my skin from the first visit and. Uh, there's just no way back, you know. Everything is very much before and after India. It's um, I've said this a number of times earlier today as well in a different interview, but I strongly believe India is a different planet that just happened to, to, to bounce onto Earth, you know. Uh, I've, I've been all around the place and I go, yeah, yeah, okay, oh, this is different culture. And then you come to India and everything is just upside down. And I love it, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's a culture shock uh, the first time it's like ah oh, and I, I've said this uh, as well many times that you experience more stuff in a city like Bombay you know or Mumbai uh, Mumbai or whatever uh, than you do a lifetime in, in Sweden or Scandinavia nobody lives where I live you know uh, and here it's just the, the, the intensity is insane you know but it's there is no way back um, Sometimes I find myself just, ah, what is happening? Or oh, I need to get out of the country now. And then after a week, <laughs> India is a good idea. Should we go back? Yes, I have to, you know. So I go back and recharge my batteries. And then, and then India, here I come again, you know. Nice. And I steal bits and pieces. And I get, I'm deeply influenced by everything from your uh, cooking. I'm a veggie man, you know. But, uh, and, and also the music. Um, it's, uh, I get flabbergasted every time, you know. I... The more I learn, the less I know. It sounds stupid, but it's really, I feel I've scratched the surface of the surface of the surface, you know. I'm at the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> and and uh, again, it's like, wow. And I also realized I am Swedish and not Indian. And uh, But it's okay for me. I take the bits and pieces I understand and uh, bring it home and twist and turn it around and make it my own and find a way to incorporate it into my sany music. Good God, I'm talking a lot, sorry. Yes. <laughs> That's quite all right. <laughs> all right. Do you remember your first visit to India though? I do. It was in 2005 with my friend uh, Jonas Hellboy and a crazy drummer called Niklas Campagnol and my wife Camilla. Um, we were here for three and a half weeks. Uh, somebody planned the entire tour. Uh, I think it was the late Amit Saigal, God bless him. 
um, with, uh, you know, just dark. Okay, we'll go here and here and here. <laughs> so we went all over the country, you know. And one day it was in Bangalore and Kolkata and Hyderabad and Delhi and Mumbai. And then we chilled out and did some really weird gigs. One was Funk the Jazz in Goa. It was <laughs> very strange. Everything was glued together, you know, electricity all over the place. One was Jazz by the Beach. People would sit and dine while we played really, really screwed up jazz. But it was great, um, and there, there was, again, there was no back, and I got to play with uh, lovely Indian musicians, everyone from Ranjit Parot to Niladri Kumar, and wow, the have... Minayakrams, you know, Selva Ganesh and, and his uh, brothers. I even had a Carnatic blessing in Chennai from Viku Vinayakram, you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's really, really great. There is no way back, you know. And so, yeah, I love it. Stay Indian. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you seem to have a fascination for Indian music, you know. Yeah. So where did you kind of develop this uh, interest in rags and especially like the rag Pantuvarali, which is like yeah. something you've used quite a bit? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, well, I think it actually, my, my mom and dad, uh, dad would listen to LPs with train sounds. Oh, this train, check it out. <laughs> While my mom would listen to uh, stuff like uh, Louis Armstrong or lots of, you know, um, sort of Hindustani or northern classical music, uh, uh, of course, Ravi Shankar and everything. So I didn't understand it, and but I just liked the sound of it. And my brother-in-law had some kind of scholarship when I was 15 or 16, and he spent it on having one of Ravi Shankar's uh, students coming to Sweden and live with us for a summer. His name was Roshan, and we arranged some some gigs and everything and I still didn't understand it but it was an Indian guy in our living room for an entire summer cooking food so we would shit our pants and uh, <laughs> Woohoo! this is really strong <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom <laughs> you know so uh, but it was it was great so but not until I got together with Jonas and he introduced me to a lot of Indian musicians I, I understand it and got the bug for real and being exposed to Carnatic music especially with the rhythm and the, the many rogs that, that, you know, for me a raga is not something that has to do with the time of day or mood or uh, uh, monsoon or whatever. To me, it's, it's a scale, you know, uh, not in a, in a bad way, but it's all, oh, this is really, really weird. It's a strange combination of notes. And then I jerk around with it for a while and, and maybe I'll find some rhythm structure or a melody or a chord or, or try a um, parallel mode. What was the question again? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yes, God bless India. It's good stuff and um, I love it. Yeah. All right, so coming to your music a little bit, you know, uh, how did Free Kitchen come about and what inspired that name? I think uh, deep down as a Frank Zappa fan and spending my miserable teenage years locked up in my teenage room, practicing music and trying to grow my own moustache and figure out who I, who I was and how to get my personality through in the sound. I, I, I'm a big Frank Zappa fan and I tried to learn to play his The Dangerous Kitchen. The Dangerous Kitchen. It's a hopeless song to play uh, about when um, he's trying to get some, some food in the middle of the night and how mm. scary that is ah. and, and everything. And I always like the word freak. I've always done things differently. I've always walked the road less traveled, so to speak, you know. So I consider myself uh, pretty much a freak. It's a terrible name. Headbanger's Kitchen is much better because <laughs> it's free k k kitchen, you know, and people who don't know us, are, it's a free kitchen today, or hey, can I have the free chicken? Free uh, chicken yeah. is... <laughs> so it, it's a shit name, but I drew the logo with the water colors and whatever you can call it. Uh, it's catchy. Yeah, whatever, you know. You call your band name something, it's, it's no mystery or it doesn't have to be oh, any yeah. deeper meaning to yeah. it. So That's free true. kitchen, it's okay, free k k k k kitchen. Yes. So you've often been labeled as a metal musician in a couple of places. So what exactly is metal to you? And do you believe that you're a metal musician or do you not like to be confined to a certain label, so to speak? Honestly, I, I really don't care. To me, metal music uh, could be Django Reinhardt playing gypsy jazz and playing it really like he means it or Igor Stravinsky or Bela Bartok or... Um, uh, Debashis Bhattacharya can be metal music to me, although it's, it's, you know, Hindustani slide guitar. Because it's an attitude, it's a question of attitude. It doesn't have to be distortion. I like distortion. I like loud guitars and beefy drums. But, but 
metal music to me is stuff that gets me going. You know, it can be ACDC. Mm. You know, that's it's blues rock. But but uh, it's really uh, there's a lot of bad metal music out there, and there's a lot of good stuff. But metal music is it's a way of life. You know, and mm. I will always be a metal man. Each um, a metal man. <laughs> I will always be a metal man. <laughs> but 20 seconds every year, I pretend I'm a jazz player. and start to get into really difficult chords and chords with numbers and adult sounding chords. And then I realize, no, I'm not. I am a metal man. So this is what gets me going. But I can use the tonality of Romanian folk music or classical Indian music or, or blues or whatever, you know. So it, it's in the mind, you know, just because you have distortion doesn't mean you're metal at all. Yeah, of course. You know, so, yeah. And, you know, Freak Kitchen is a very fun band. It's, it's very lighthearted. It's not serious and... Uh, yeah, yeah. And, but you play a lot of festivals, you know, which are big metal festivals. So have you ever met people with, you know, who take their music a little too seriously? And how has their reaction been to Freak Kitchen? And have you ever had any encounters of that kind? The thing is, with, with Free Kitchen, we, we try to be relaxed and don't, we don't really pretend to be somewhere we are not. That's the main thing. We don't really consider ourselves a, a, a fun band. I know what you mean, because we are relaxed and if someone has, hey, 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 he took off his underpants, come on stage, show your sex organ. It's fine. <laughs> it's entertainment, you know. I want to have a good time and I get very tired and bored of, so many bands that are so uptight and they have this routine, okay, three, four, and everybody starts jumping for the sake of jumping. Okay, we got to do this and got to do that. You do what you do and you are who you are. And if I want to address the audience, say, hey, today I shit my pants at a minar, <laughs> uh, so be it, you know. But the stuff we do is dead serious. It's not easy stuff to play. Uh, so it's a fine line. And we sing about stuff yeah. that's sometimes quite difficult. And when you add a little... Uh, humorous aspect it's easier to take it in otherwise it's it's kind of we have a song called saving up for an anal bleach i'll give the cd to you uh in a little <laughs> wheel on our new album cooking with pagans and uh uh at first it's it's you laugh when you read the lyrics and then you realize it's actually where we are today in 2014 21st century uh it's kind of fucked up uh in many ways and and then it's not as funny as you know, but, but it's a good way to bring people in, you know, because if you just have a pointer and I know I am right and you are wrong yeah. and so on, and then, then it's, it's turning you away. Oh, who are you, you pompous mm -hmm. asshole, you know? So, but just relax and share stuff you think about and do it with a, with a little twist. You, yeah, know? you are who you are. So, so yeah. there's humor and there's stories behind all the songs. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm sure when you came to India, somebody explained to you what Eklund means. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> what was your reaction to that? It took me two weeks before anyone actually explained to me. They were just looking very strange when I presented myself, what I would call down to the lobby, lobby and the people, <laughs> oh, Mr. Eklund? Yes, yes, Eklund. Yeah, well, what about it? Yes, I want a sandwich. You know, <laughs> yes, Mr. Eklund. <laughs> and, like, and then, do you know what your last name means? It means one penis. I was like, okay. So, but I think it's a cool thing to be called, you know, guitar one penis or guitar one dick. So, yeah, you can have a shirt. You know. <laughs> yes, you made a shirt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I got a shirt. It was a, it was a gift from a fan in, in Germany, a friend in Germany. So, oh, yeah. wow. Yes. That's so, pretty cool. That's cool. You, you got to call yourself something. Okay. So, I also, re I was reading up on you on Wikipedia because I had to make the questions. Okay. So Wikipedia is so full of stuff about you. Very interesting things. Oh, I am not responsible for anything. Yes. One of the things I read is your first band was called Frozen Eyes. What? Frozen Eyes. And, and you joined in the mid 80s and left because your band manager was embezzling money from the band. Yeah. yeah I don't even remember. We signed. We, it was a terrible teenage band. Uh, we were really trying to do way too many things. It was not good. But it was an embryo and of things to come, you know. We went to the UK, uh, paid a fortune to be on a really crappy collection. The Metal Collection 3 by Ebony Records. <laughs> so bad. Uh, and we puked ourselves through Yorkshire, I think. And uh, then we did an album. We, we paid for that as well. We were just happy to put our names on something that said record deal. Whatever. We didn't really understand what it meant. Um, and was on, on a crappy Danish label. Um, so, yeah, it took me a while to get out of that, uh, to sign to EMI when I joined Fate. 
when I was 19, when Merciful Fate broke up, it was King Diamond, and mm. then it was Fate, which was all about big hair, and yeah. uh, and I was the only guy who didn't have an artist name, so they did three albums before me, and the drummer's name was Bob Lance, and then it was Pete Steiner, I think, on bass, and uh, when I joined, they said, so what's, what's your name going to be? I said, Matthias Eklund, is that okay? How about like Matt Oak or something, because <laughs> Ek is Oak. Nah, I'd rather be Matthias Ia Eklund if that's okay. So then the drummer changed his name from Bob Lance, which sounds like a bad porno name, to <laughs> Bjorn Holm, which was his real name and so on. Why am I talking about this? I don't know. Because <laughs> Sorry. Yes. No, no, we were, I was asking you about the story of, of Frozen Eyes. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, well, I was in Copenhagen for three years and then I decided, okay, I know enough about show business to realize it sucks and I know how to protect myself. And then I moved back to uh, to Sweden, Gothenburg, and uh, formed Free Kitchen in mm -hmm. 1992. And that's been my job ever since, you know. I have Free Kitchen as my main thing. Then I do my Free Guitar thing, which is, uh, thank God I have Steve Vine on board to release yeah. that. And then I, when I have the time, I play with Jonas and we make strange music. Sometimes I do like a project we play with symphony orchestras or big band stuff, but nice. um, it, it's pretty much all I have time for and trying to be a good family man. So you were saying about the music industry and you know, what are the actual realities of the industry today? You know, a lot of bands have this, like you said, like when you were young, it was oh record deal and yeah, yeah. you know, touring, but what is the reality? How easy is it kind of being a musician, going on tour, you know, do, is it is it just, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, partying all night long? It's never been... Yeah, well, it was for, for sex, drugs and, and rock and roll. Not so much drugs, but sex, some booze and, and uh, rock and roll. Dragging innocent Swiss women into my hotel room, getting thrown out of hotel room, running naked in German cities and so on. When I was <laughs> 19, 20, 21, when I was with Fate. And I realized that this is not really who I am. I'm kind of a boring guy. I like to make music. I like to spend time with my instrument and create something out of nothing. Um, the thing is, a lot of people complain about show business, and of course show business sucks. It's not a friendly uh, industry like any yes. corporate crap. But the thing is, you have to adjust, you know. There's lots of money to be made, and I don't do this, you know, because of money, not at all. But I want to get paid for what I do, because otherwise I can't do it. Uh, so I, I just ask for, for uh, decent money. But you have to have a wide palette of income, you know. Uh, touring is okay. Uh, you gotta, as we spoke about before, um, you gotta really hit people over the head that yes, I'm coming to this place or we are coming, uh, because uh, otherwise you do uh, you play London and the day after you have ten emails. Why don't you ever play London? <laughs> it's a for fuck's sake, you know. Um, and I do tuition stuff. I have my free guitar camp, and when I've done two camps, I have enough. Uh, tuition material and I release that with and without guitar, lots of notation. That is a good income as well. Then you do, uh, I have a little merchandise company, you know, you sell uh, hoodies and shirts and all that stuff. Um, you may write an article or do this and that, a guest spot here and there. Um, so I get money from a lot of different sources and that together I can actually provide my family a decent life and I live happily in the Swedish woods with my son and my wife and my two German shepherds and a schizophrenic cat and I have my studio and uh, I own a little bit of property and a little forest and a couple of Volvos and Volkswagens. <laughs> so it's it's a decent life uh, playing strange music and, and you can do it too. You've got to work hard, you know. You age a little bit, your gray hair uh, is there, but it's okay. I'm 44, 45 actually since Monday. Good God. I'm 45, <laughs> uh, but I'm having a ball, uh, traveling the planet and doing my own thing, growing my own mustache and meeting guys like you and you and you and you and you. Yes, it's, yes. it's a cool thing. Good. Oh, Lord, I talk a lot. Well, yes. that's the idea. <laughs> okay. So speaking of guest slots, you, I read, played on the first four Soilwork albums. Yes, I think I did, yes. How did that come about and, you know, uh, did they approach you or...? They were, they are a bit tad younger than, than I am and uh, I think it was when we recorded our third album, uh, self-titled Free Kitchen album. We just rented a big, uh, like a warehouse with a... Uh, parts of an, uh, an aeroplane and a little bit of a car and it's an ugly place and 
on top of us was an actual studio, Studio Friedman, which is a legendary yes, Swedish studio, you know, the Gothenburg sound yeah, and all well, that stuff. The dream and to record. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And these guys from Helsingborg were there and Friedman, uh, Fredrik came down and he said, uh, listen, they, they, these guys, uh, Pete and Ola, they, they are the big fans of you. And uh, could you come up and say hello? And they want to be, could, what, could you play on a song? I think the uh, first one, I was really into the dildo, so I think there was some dildo <laughs> playing. And then... For each album, Pete and would just phone me up and say, can you come and play? And sure. I think the last one I did was Natural Born Chaos with Devin yeah. Townsend. That was the first time I met Devin and we decided to do, I said, can I, can I put a different guitar on? I just improvised and then I did it in harmony and he was like, fucking hell, this is, you know your <laughs> shit, son. You know, so it, it's, it's all good. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I haven't got a clue who's in the band now, though. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you also did a guest slot on Workshop's album. I did! What made you say yes and how did you kind of approach that slot? Did you just like wake up and go like... Oh, I my approach, I don't know. I play and I don't think too much about it. I am what I am, but... I did it because you were such a nice guy. Oh, uh, thank you. Very and nice. I like the shirt. I wear it every once in a while. <laughs> the dragon. And the everything. dragon, yes. yes. My son likes it as well. Hey, Dad, wear the dragon shirt <laughs> when you take me to school. So, uh, but uh, I, I, you do what you do and you try to not really blend in. I, I do what I do and sometimes a lot of my heavy metal colleagues, they think I, I play all the wrong notes. They say, we want you to shred the right notes, sort of. The white keys of the piano. Ah, yes. So, but you now we need some tension here. We need yeah. something to point you in the eye, you know, slap you in the face. So, um, but I, I really don't remember my approach for that solo, you know. Because that uh, was it's a, all blur. It was amazing. I mean, it's like <laughs> I remember it fun. I think Christoph did well as well. Yeah, Christoph and you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was yeah. a, it was an honor for us to have the two of you on. Shredding. On, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was supposed to be a blues song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Nice. So. Since we are a food show, I have to ask you. Yes. What's your favorite food? Your favorite cuisine? What do you like to eat? Oh, I like Indian food. Uh, I like your Indian cooking. Uh, what did we have? We had you had fish, fish last time. It was oh, not vegetarian. I fish. Is, so you're a fishitarian. Yeah, I, you know, it's called pescatarian. Pescatarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Presbyterian. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, I uh, like uh, your fish. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I will see. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to eat fish again today. Yes. The freaky fish curry. The freaky fish curry. So the difference between last time and this time is that this time I've actually learned to make it and cooked it myself. Who cooked it last time? My uh, cook. Oh, the cook. Yes, Very the good. cook made it. This is authentic Sahil freak fish. Yes. So if you had to sort of pick your last meal, what would you eat? Oh... Freak fish curry, I guess. Really? Uh, yeah, you never know. You never know. Oh, that's we'll, that see, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Well, it's at least Indian stuff and might be your dish. We'll see. Oh, we'll see if it makes the cut. In this kitchen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you do any cooking of your own? I do. Very primitive. Uh, we, uh, me and my wife, we, uh, we sort of start to cook when we figure out we are hungry. Or when the son is, I'm hungry. <gasps> okay, what do we have? <laughs> really fast. <laughs> we'll squeeze it together. Eat. It's never sophisticated, but it's always good protein and always veggie and uh, very decent. And again, we recycle and buy organic mm -hmm. stuff. And we're so good people. Yes. What kind of a metal music? <laughs> I'm a metal man, wimpy metal man. Yeah. Yeah. Organic metal man. Organic metal man, yes, that's good. Yes. Caring for the world metal man. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, um, speaking of something else, uh, does Matthias Eklund have any hobbies apart from just being a musician? I read a lot. I uh, watch a lot of movies. I'm, I'm a dinosaur. I'm an old school guy. I buy Blu-ray movies. I spend thousands of crowns every month because that's my sort of reward for lack of sleep and uh, you know a very hectic schedule every once in a while. So I come home. I have a lovely living room, uh, 50 square meters, where with a big fireplace and. Uh, two large beds, big HD TV. So uh, that's my thing. We watch some good TV shows, HBO, lots of popcorn, organic popcorn, <laughs> olive oil, lots of strange spices, Indian spices. You, you, uh, sometimes they are so spicy, I have to sort of <sighs> exhale and then eat and then, uh, otherwise I have sneeze attack, sneeze attack, <laughs> organic metal man sneeze attack. 
um, so that's that's how it is. And um, I work with my house. It's like okay, we should spend some money doing this. And hey, let's build a dog yard. And uh, I'm not a super duper handyman. I do primitive stuff like painting, and I carry a lot of things. I pay for everything. <laughs> So the carpenters do the sophisticated stuff, and then I clean it up. Wonderful. So. Yep. And dogs and family, and yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. So what's next on the cards for you after you do your free guitar clinic here yeah. and your free guitar camp? Yeah. What's next for? Um, then I go back to Sweden. We re rehearse like crazy uh, with uh, Free Kitchen to learn the new songs that we don't know by now. Uh, for lots of upcoming gigs, we're gonna do a Swedish tour in November. We play uh, some beautiful venues around Sweden. Some of them are going to be live streamed on the internet. Uh, then I'm off to Japan with my Applehorn 8 string comparison guitar to play uh, Tokyo and Osaka and shoot some young guitar magazine video. Uh, then it's Christmas time and next year I start with uh, some clinics around the world and then we do a Finnish tour. February, March is a big European tour with pretty much every European country. Wow. Many, 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 many shows. Uh, in March we have, uh, I think this Frankfurt Messe and then it's uh, some more Norwegian shows wow. and we go back to Italy in April and uh, onward the rest of the year pretty much, yes. Wow, you are a busy, busy man. I am a busy, busy man, <laughs> yes, but I like it. It's, it's, uh, it's a blessing to be able to do what you do and, uh, and we plan it so nobody's, you know, torn apart and we, if we tour for two weeks, then we're home for two weeks, you know. Yeah. Uh, so because we're all parents and, uh, and you know, husbands and everything, and we want to have it all, you know. Yeah. So we go on the road with charged batteries, and then we go home and lick uh, the wounds, you know, and then, <laughs> okay, and there we go again. And it's a pretty, pretty good life, I think. It's cool to be able to do it. You know, tw Free Kitchen has been around for 21 years, yeah, and I survived on my music for 26 years. It's amazing. It's amazing so, indeed. It is. So, on that note, I hope you're ready to taste the freaky fish curry. The freaky fish curry. Yes, I am. All Good. right. Let's get that freaky fish curry. <laughs> All right, Matthias. So, here it is, the freaky fish curry. <sighs> Smells delicious. Dig in, please. Oof. I start with the fish. This is a fork. Mm. And let's see. Here is the Indian fish. Oh, that was a tiny piece. I. That was a, we normally eat <laughs> with a spoon, <laughs> so it's easier. <laughs> yes, but I'm I usually I'm left-handed, so I do everything backwards. Here's the first taste. Your floor is fish-proof, right? Yes. Right, let's go. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, this fish did not die in vain. This is really good. Yeah. It's damn delicious, if I may say so, my damn self. Sorry for swearing <laughs> at Headbanger's Kitchen. It's not too but hot for you, is it? No, this is excellent. So there you have it. Matthias has given the thumbs up to the freaky fish curry. The freaky fish curry. This is my kind of freaky fish curry. And we'll see you on the next episode of Headbanger's Kitchen. Indeed. <laughs> you have any message you want to give your fans? Do the free fish curry. Do the f uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, please do support this gentleman. He's a good guy. He's one of the good guys out there. Um, stay freaky, and um, I'll be coming to your house or apartment uh, anytime soon. You never know. I am uh, like uh, I like to say I'm like herpes. I don't quite go away. I'm away for a while, and then I'm back. So, and now I'm back. And um, India, nor me, is going to be the same after this visit. But uh, freak, freaky. Mm, 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 mm. Very good. Um, God bless and uh, good night. And so I remember when Chris, our bass player, he told the drummer Bjorn, "Look, it's a chicken in the street. Well, let's eat it. It's been here for 14 days. We'll try it. It looks good and everything." So they eat, ate it, and <gasps> shit. So he started to sweat like crazy when we watched the minar, and he said, "Listen, it's coming. It's coming now. What is coming? <laughs> I'm gonna caca. I'm gonna caca in my pants. You know, I need to go to the loo." So I asked someone, you know, ah, "Where's the closest bath bathroom?" And uh, he was very confused. I think. Uh, if you walk 20 minutes that, maybe try that direction if I remember correctly, 20 minutes or so, maybe you can find. 
and ah, you found some hole in the wall and you sprayed it. Of course, sorry about that. I have to censor <laughs> this. Um, um, and that was a nice afternoon. <laughs>